the end, I'm a generalist designer, but 20 years ago, there was, uh, I started to design food, and this was a, a, f a type of food that needed a specific type of concept, of context, because it was a different type of food. And after that, I designed this uh, context, which is a context uh, of interior design. And after that, it was something of innovative, it was something intuitive, so I had to design a ritual of how you had to go about this context. And finally, around 10 years ago, I realized that, that I had a collection of something that I called business models. And at the end, uh, what are these business models? They are, as Fuzetti said, formats, but I call them business models. I'm going to show you some of these business models. If I find a way to do that. The first business model is uh, the solar kitchen restaurant. And what is the Solar Kitchen Restaurant? It's a restaurant that bases its cuisine uh, on these solar ovens. And uh, it's much better than the traditional cuisine. And if you want to sit up at the front, there's empty seats. And in 2011, with... with a famous cook from Finland. What we did was paint an area, a white area, on which we then put the oven, solar ovens, and we cooked when the sun was out. We wrote the name, Solar Kitchen Restaurant, and we, funnily enough, won an architecture prize with the uh, fact that the minimum that you can do to have uh, an architectural space. And the other curious thing about our project is that the Finnish people who were eating here, that was an open area, when they had to smoke a cigarette, they would exit the white square you see. Mealing is uh, another business model from 2009, and it was uh, uh, asked me where they asked me to redesign a futuristic uh, banqueting like Marinetti did in 1909 in Milan. So I decided in 2009 it was meaningless to sit at a table and everything had to be a lot more accelerated. So my idea was to have food attached to ceramic cups, glasses with chewing gum that was neutral. And then after that, statements that you had to make once you ate like when you presented a friend to another friend and he did something that was unexpected so that in 25 minutes 80 people that did this at the end become almost friends intimate friends this was done in new york in 2009 Fit Bar is uh, for public funding, Ice Cube Bar, it's a business model that says that use a public drinking fountain, incorporating an ice machine so that after a few hours 
this drinking fountain is uh, full of ice uh, and you can use the ice as a champagne bar until the police arrives. And this is, it was presented at the Foundation Sondretto in 2008. You see the ice machine right there. The candy restaurant is also uh, an, a communication agency that had asked me to work on this project, uh, an agency from Japan. And it's a project in which they asked me to uh, of cross media to help a campaign of a brand that was a brand of warehouses called fashion therapy and it was based on pills so what i did was i created a restaurant where you only ate candy which is why it's called candy restaurant You can see that there was a bar where they were preparing all these candy menus and they were candy that came from the market, then there was a candy chef and tables where all of the Japanese were eating candy. Food facility is another business model. Uh, which uh, once again was given to me by Mediamatic and they do new media in Amsterdam and they asked me to create uh, something with food and new media. In 2008, it was starting to be very popular. Google was very popular and Google, as you all know, is a machine that organizes contents but doesn't uh, foresee or see it. So what I thought to do was to make a restaurant where you would enter, you would sit at one of the tables and there's a waitress that gives you a menu that is made of 12 menus, takeaway restaurant menus. One was Chinese, one was Japanese, one was Spanish, one was Mexican. So you would order the menu you wanted. The waitress would call these takeaway restaurants that were in the city of Amsterdam. And then the couriers would deliver the menus to the restaurant, to a food DJ that then would bring it to the table. So with this, what we did was that we created an outsourcing format of what is a restaurant of the hardest parts of our restaurants, uh, like the warehouse and the kitchen and the chefs and all every and everything else was outsourced in this business model. And through outsourcing, we and what we had and sold was the drinks, uh, which is what you make money with. This was done for about a month in Amsterdam. And what was interesting was that the first day that the scooters arrived, but they never entered in the restaurant because they never thought about the fact that they had to do a delivery inside the restaurant. And the other thing, two other interesting things. One is that as the interiors were general, it was very difficult to be able to think about what type of food I could have uh, chosen, uh, Danish or Mexican. Uh, there was no atmosphere inside the restaurant. And the other thing that we noticed was that there was a table on the first day who asked us who's, which kitchen is going to deliver first. And so they uh, bet on who would have received their dinners first. Get for a party is also 
a business model based on the idea of creating a number of gin and tonics so that you could enter into a space and breathe in this fog of gin and tonic and you could drink gin and tonic without a glass. This was done with a machine that is used for agriculture that is based on uh, ultrasounds that break the molecules of the liquid and release them in the air in uh, a form of vapors and fog. We created these warning signs because we thought maybe it's dangerous if somebody were to smoke inside and it would explode, but it's, it wasn't. Uh, even the alcohol and the sugar is dangerous because it enters into all of the electronic devices and it breaks them. And then you become totally sticky. And this is uh, the project, and this is a project from 2004. Food bank is an idea of extending a restaurant to all the city. The idea was to painting a van with a name or and a number and then and then the phone number and the menu and then you would call this number and you would ask what you wanted and order and somebody would take it to you to this counter. This is quite frequent now with the apps that have appeared recently, but you must remember that this was 2002. And this is the food bank, this is the counter we used. Pharma food is another concept, and the idea was to create macro molecules of vitamins, proteins, and minerals which are present in the air, and then when you breathe, you could eat them, inhale them, that way you would uh, feed yourself. The problem is that if you breathe this dust, which is nutrition, it enters in your lungs and there is a particle here that creates a stimulus in the saliva and this powder attaches to the saliva and then goes down to your stomach. This was uh, the installation uh, here with the adhesive tape that said, uh, warning, you're entering a high nutrient zone. Food for three was another business model. It uh, was about uh, the idea with uh, food sponsored by sponsors and brands. And so it's based on the idea of in the old ancient times there were groups of people that would go around Europe completely free and would eat off of plants and nature there was no agriculture, there was no economy and for a lot of people this was the hell, gold age of humanity because everybody was at the same level and nature was at the same level and so the idea was that if we created a network of uh, sponsored food so that like today, it could go around Europe and you could eat the shape uh, for free of a brand, then this means that society and consumers is the new nature. This is an omelette with Calvin Klein as a sponsor. Football is a camper project in which, like, uh, the campers are fast foods, healthy fast food, where I found 
for the first jam Javier I think that's where we met the first time and as you can see this is a bottle from 2004 where uh, Javier had been involved and this was a project of campers uh, that then once the camper was abandoned they were like rice balls and a series of other beverages and that you would eat informally on steps on boxes on steps and all of the interior was made with uh, bio materials this is the end of the presentation but then I have uh, at noon today we spoke and I had forgotten the muta and uh, which is a project that was assigned to me by Javier. Muta, I can tell you more about Muta, but the idea was to create these closed boxes that, like a gallery that has uh, stocked and put away the pieces of art, and when it opened, it became a restaurant that every time, every three months, it would change uh, the kitchen. Thank you. So you met Javier because he was in camper, but at camper he wasn't a chef. But you're not a chef. Tell us who you are. Hello everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, if I have to be truthful with you, at the time I was starting to, grow, to become a chef because uh, I had had my first restaurant that I had opened in Mallorca after three years of uh, misunderstandings uh, because uh, we were a bit like Martin and all, we always tried to do things that we liked doing without thinking that the place uh, was the right place and that the clients were the right place, the right clients. And these personal satisfactions uh, sometimes lead you to success and other times don't. So we had to close down this restaurant and start working for Camper. A new job and a new adventure to start to learn again. This is me. Before understanding certain things, an important thing was the naming and how to give things the name. We always tried to label and give things name that had meaning until we got to a point and we realized that you are the name and that the brand, uh, you are the brand. And so we decided to start working in a different way, in a new way, uh, which was a lot more personal. And when we changed uh, from a food look that didn't mean anything to Mr. Bonnet, This is uh, my professional uh, experience, as Antonello said. Uh, for seven years, uh, this is what made me Italian. I had experiences, thanks to Italians in Japan, uh, with Guartiero Marchesi and Davide Utani. I had the personal experience of a year uh, with a friend of mine, and then I worked in England and Germany, Spain. And uh, from 1988, which is when I started my career, until 2001, I started this University of High Gastronomy. I have been to all the most important restaurants uh, from with Guatero Marchesi, who at the time was the great Italian chef at the, in those years, and all of the other restaurants are at the same level. <laughs> When we decided to go back home, we thought that we had already learned enough to be able to do something that was ours, and we opened this restaurant, 
which was a restaurant that was fusion. We had Mediterranean cuisine with a very Japanese image, Italian image. And we created this restaurant in 2000. And this is and all the graphics that I have of that restaurant. I only kept a logo. And this means something because in that moment of my life, we did everything that you do a restaurant would go through my hands. And this obviously played against me and we understood that you have to have a team, you have to delegate and you have to do things that you are the best at and let other people do other things. So I didn't write down anything, I don't have a recipe, I didn't keep anything. This whole experience of mine disappeared and became uh, null and it became a negative experience that in the end becomes a very positive experience because you then have to go work for companies that have nothing to do with food that uh, start this project uh, designed for Marty that has a lot more to do with people and food and the way people eat. So thinking about people rather than business and all the other things that we had been used to thinking about for the restaurant. When I learned to work with designers and people that work in the commercial departments and to take care of architecture and marketing departments and understood that everybody was working with computers and everybody were gathering and collecting information to be able to inform friends and all these people, the information showed us that we hadn't understood anything of how the world was turning at the time and we started to learn once again how to work. From that year, 2004, until 2006, which is when I brought forth this project, in 2006 uh, I went to work for uh, on my own in Madrid. And I did uh, all kinds of jobs. I was a consultant, I was a chef for other uh, restaurant owners that maybe weren't able to understand their restaurants and the needs their restaurant had. They needed uh, a little bit of uh, conceptualization of their restaurant and so we started designing restaurants for them and to uh, run the kitchens and then we did the first restaurant together which is this one which was a restaurant where we wanted to create the restaurant in a place that had an identity uh, a 50s identity a cafeteria and in those years, in that moment, uh, the kitchen, we had decided for the times and the variety of products available that people needed in those years because it was 2008 and it was uh, in a full economic crisis. People had to eat uh, for low with a little money and they wanted to come in the me morning, afternoon, night, and we had to be able to satisfy their needs and we had to give good products and varieties with a good price at all price at all hours of the day and for uh, in a place with an identity. We changed the restaurant, the concept uh, in uh, Lisbon and here in Madrid too. And at that point we decided to open up a restaurant in Mallorca. Going back to Mallorca, and I didn't want to go back at all because of that terrible experience I have had, I had had, and it had really marked me, but there was a new story that needed telling, and we found a place uh, in the area where I was born, which uh, is uh, a small town of fishermen. And this place allowed me to tell a story that was very familiar to me at the same time. So we created a concept called Patronas Lunares. And Patron Lunares speaks about the possible story through which food can tell, like, such as my family. My parents, my family was a family of butchers and my grandfather was a fisherman. So we homaged the family and we decided to create this restaurant. The name is Patron Lumares and it's the name that my grandfather had. This is the restaurant. It was a place that had over a hundred years history and we wanted 
to create it and to enhance it and make it more modern without touching anything. It seems like it's all antique, but in reality, the only original feature of the restaurant was the counter you see in this picture. That was very characteristic and feature-like because it's a, a meter and 30 when people were usually a meter and 60 centimeters tall, so the clients would drink their coffee basically standing up. And so we changed it and we turned it into a fish counter with shell food that was presented itself better for a more important product than just coffee. And this is a global image of the venue. It looks like a very antique restaurant, but except for those pillars and the counter, everything is new. This image is important for us because we wanted to homage the fishermen of the area. And we uh, traced all the families uh, of the famous fishermen who had died and we wanted pictures of them to be able to create the paintings to then hang up in the restaurant and unfortunately we weren't able because the families didn't want us to uh, hang the fishermen's pictures and so we did another story and we used the patron, my father, myself and myself and some other people of the family and a few other partners with their grandfathers who were also particular or had specific uh, particular experiences which was a way to transmit our message of generation through a few images. This is the place, the first plate that I drew and it's called Calamar Coete and it was very funny because initially I had an idea of how to present food and I would Google it and look for images to tell the stories and to tell cooks how I wanted the plates and I found on the internet uh, a, sh a calamar with uh, a coete and this was the first illusion that it had become a huge success. It's a very um, it's fried shrimp presented like this. It's the most sold place because obviously it's done well, it's fried well. But it sells by itself, everybody wants it, everybody sees it, and everybody orders it. A lot more rustic plates. Another concept plate, uh, which is uh, beer chicken. This is the graphics that we chose for the paintings. It is very important for us that not only the food and the recipes and the presentation of the dishes are good, if we have to tell a story, we have to follow all of the aspects of it because we believe that in the restaurants people comes and not everybody want to, to take in all the information so we have to give them as much as information we can by looking at her taking care of all the details with the design of the menu the history this is the menu where we have all the dishes and there's a lot of stories and even windows a little bit like windows to tell the story of other people uh, about suppliers rather than people that were important in that area. These are all the designs and graphics that we chose to tell this story. This is inside the restaurant, create the packaging. It's a bit strange, but we decided with the ensaymada, which is a typical dessert from Mallorca. It's the most famous one uh, in the world, I think, for Mallorca. And I think everybody has seen these boxes that go around in the airports and so forth. And we wanted to represent it uh, with these ensaymadas as if they were uh, jellyfish that are fished out of the sea. And then it can also become a memory to take away with you from the holidays. So these are a few of the images 
that we use to tell the story and to connect the clients with small events that we organize. This is a restaurant uh, that makes us forget certain things and start to work in a different way, more than thinking. Until the restaurant that I showed you so often till now, we were in a very nostalgic moment without even knowing we were, because we weren't thinking about it when we saw these presentations that we wanted to do and all the information that we had on our computers and everything had a uh, working uh, connection, nostalgia, all the restaurants spoke about nice things uh, done well like they used to be done in the past, we looked after all the details and then all of a sudden here we decided to change completely and we decided to stop uh, and it was a very important decision because it was a good business. We also closed one of the companies that uh, took care of catering, uh, only customized catering. Uh, we've never repeated the same catering or the same type of food. And even if that was okay for us and it worked well, we decided to stop completely and we wanted to change personally and to then be able to create a new shop. And we worked on this project, which was called Sala de Despies. We were in a typical traditional uh, residential, uh, the most representative neighborhood in old Madrid, and there were clubs where people would go to grab a beer and have a bite to eat and have some uh, squid and shell food and uh, salami, so in a very easy way, but it's a quality product and even expensive because people can spend 20, 30 euros easily in 10 minutes in these types of uh, venues and so we decided that we wanted to homage these types of uh, bars and venues that were very informal where you really took care and take care of the products and the product and specifically in that moment we wanted to create a real project to be able to be happy about it and we thought that if we had to speak about the product which in the kitchen is the only truth about the kitchen products are the truth they didn't have to be nostalgic or sad we didn't have to look at the sea or at the port or the farmers we had to look at the industry because in those years the truth of products was the industry and so everything that we did and we had served to tell the story has an image and, it, and textures that are very industrial. This is a restaurant, but in reality it's a bar where you eat sitting at the counter and where you have 30 seats, but 15 stools which means you have 10, 12, 15 people that are comfortable and other 20 people that are uncomfortable. And this at the beginning uh, made us think that it would have been a problem because we were coming from uh, refined cuisine and restaurants where we looked after of all the details and everybody had to have their space and place, 50 centimeters uh, between people sitting even at the same table and then one meter to the next table between the two tables and so forth. Those are the frontiers that are in a restaurant. Whereas here we abolished and pulled down all frontiers that existed in a restaurant and work as you work in a bar with this anarchy in the space. And the client decides where he's going to place himself, how he's going to eat. And so the clients entered and it was really uncomfortable. In the end, you had 45, 40 people for in a space for 20, 25 people. But we thought that that's the way it had to be run and managed because the people were the people who managed the spaces. And what happened? That people started to interact um, between themselves and started uh, buying food for one another and sharing the food in the same place. It's things that I had never seen before. I had worked in many countries 
but I had never seen somebody sharing their food from their plate to, to somebody else, to the neighbor that was sitting next to him. We work in a way where the people arrive and changes spots whenever he finds a meter that is more comfortable. We can't work with numbers, and we didn't want to work with numbers, and so we work with names. In the end, names are people, and as clients, once we know their name, there's that change. You don't feel a client anymore, you feel more like a friend, you feel more like as if you were in your own home. And so this name of serving the food through the use of the client's name is a big mess. Everybody is screaming, Antonella, where's my mozzarella? And Antonella went to the bathroom, but Giuseppe, who's sitting here, who knows Antonella, is going to take the mozzarella. And I'll think about the mozzarella. And this interaction with all the clients starts. It becomes friendly, they all become friends, and they start doing strange things for us. Things like ruining a plate. This is the most representative plate of our restaurant. In Italy, it would be a carpaccio. We call it the churaton, which is a, a, a Syrian steak, but uh, from the top taken, zenital picture. It's meat that is seasoned and left there for 50, 60 days. It's served raw with fat, and it's important because the fat tastes old with a little bit of truffle and olives. This is a plate, a dish with three, four ingredients. But this plate, the dish, has to be finished by the client. We roll it so that they become one bite. What happens that we realize that the people and the client start playing with the food. And it becomes, and he himself, commercial. Because when he comes back, he doesn't want that he explain how this is made. Because he's already been there. So he's already mastered. And so he's selling to the other clients uh, our plates. We then have other dishes like these, which is very simple. Tomatoes are tomatoes. We don't have to talk too much about the tomatoes. We just have to serve the tomato in the best way possible. A good olive oil, fresh fried basil, a little bit of salt and pepper. And this is a dish that the children understand, the young people that travel, that understand that now you can pay seven, eight euros for a single tomato because it's very expensive to reach and a product of quality, but grandmothers understand it, moms, because they understand it's a true product. This is another one of the plates that we sell a lot, which is uh, a fried egg on the barbecue with uh, liver and truffle. Some vegetables, <coughs> flat beans with some sauce and fried. We only use the plate for the eggs. I'll show you later. These are specific types of shell food some tuna with red onions, um, meat with uh, fat and a sauce made with the same ingredients that uh, feed these animals. We homage the nutrition and the feeding for the animals. This is a dessert. Uh, it showed us that we used to give the dessert like this to the people and the people opened it and started to play and put together the ingredients and everybody were watching those MasterChef programs and the clients wanted to have fun with food. And even for us it was, and it became something that shows us kitchen and cuisine in a different way. When you present a dish like this, you think it's finished. I thought it. 
I also tell you how you're going to have to eat it. But if I give you the plate like this, there's different ways you can eat these ingredients and the taste change and the shapes change and the colors change and the way you interpret a dish changes if you eat it in one way or another. So the clients started presenting and preparing their desserts the way they wanted and this gave us ideas so we worked on a project with a table of 12 people that only spoke about this how people interpret food I'll show you later these are the graphics uh, that we did very simple ones this piece is creating distinctive parts of an animal uh, the different cuts whether it's uh, meat or fish. As you can see, those are the different cuts you have in the dispieces of an animal. And then we use these graphics that are the same graphics that you can find in these industrial areas. I don't know about tuna fish, and this is veal. These are the graphics that I saw, Martin, you had similar ones. And these are the ones we use and that everybody knows because they are industrial ones. We haven't changed anything. We played a few jokes using a few, like, uh, uh, danger if you cut yourself. But they are the same graphics. This is two years after having created Sala des Espies. Everything we learned from this experience on observation from the clients, from what I told you about people that shared the food and started playing with the food, and that we know that the dishes can be uh, served unfinished and then reinterpreted and played with and created by the client himself. And this work that the consumer has to do is a, an added value and not a negative thing. And this, all this together allowed us to create this restaurant. If you want, I will show you. If we can turn off the light a second. I'm going to show you a trailer as if it were a movie because it's more of an experience than a restaurant. This video was created like a trailer. It's a, a little bit of a joke of uh, serving, of using graphics and the design with what we're in contact with most of the time, movie theater, cinema. Uh, we did something that seems and reminds us of the experience. And it's really an experience because what we wanted to do was to leave ourselves out of the picture and make the clients play and make the clients become the most important uh, character and person in the restaurant. You can't see the restaurant. It's hidden. You have to enter through a condominium. There's two doors. One of the door is for the welcome and, and the other door is for the food and the eating. It is very important for us. We really learned a lot from this. Um, this is the room where you would eat. Very aseptic. We wanted with the designers to create 
something that was uh, anguishing, that made you feel uh, small and uh, made you look only at the food and concentrate on the food. And this is what it, how it works a little, as you can see it when it's working. These are the various aprons and the details uh, that we use to motivate the clients. That they, uh, the aprons are worn by the clients at a certain point of the dinner, and these are the dishes that we serve. As you can see, I don't know if you saw on the trailer, there was a plate with a chupeton, with a carpaccio, and this is a deluxe version, which we called the chupeton. Deluxe is the same products, but pure with the truffle, the mushrooms, the olive, the tomatoes, salt and pepper. Before it was a sauce, an Italian sauce, and here we left the ingredients and homage this plate, which was taught to us and has taught us a lot. And we bought the best possible products available to create this amazing plate in the easiest way possible. This is another dish, concept dish. We create new dishes every three months and there was always a plate made with an egg but we only served the yolk. This is called Rolex because it looks, it reminds us of a watch and the products that we serve are very expensive and so we called it uh, Rolex to play a joke. But it comes from the idea of a dish coming from Uganda and Africa that they call Rolex, which is a breakfast that they have. It's an omelette that they make with vegetables and then wrapped up in bread. And it's uh, wrapped up, uh, and an egg is wrapped up, and it's a Roland egg Rolex. And so it gave us this idea of a dish that is wrapped in itself. It's uh, burnt, and then the client has to wrap it himself and create uh, two and it's eaten in two bites. It's a dish that we serve in the restaurant now in this piece because everything that we do in Academia is the creativity we then employ in the other restaurant and sell the plates in quantity. This is another important dish in our project because it's called bonbons. Bonbons is uh, uh, candy in French and chocolate and they are bonbons made with meat. This is the fat that looks like a chocolate, but it's actually fat of the same animal. That is then cooled and uh, chilled, and then we can build up and cover and coat with whatever we want to then burn it. And once it's burned, we have it burned in front of the client. You don't have uh, smell problems as if you use barbecues. It's a way of using and cooking quality products in a very simple way in front of the client. These are the graphics. And this was a little bit the starting point of our academia. When the clients arrive, we have them sit in a room alone for 30 minutes because we want that the clients that don't know each other because it's a, a table that is going to be shared by 12 people. We want that those 12 same people at some point start breaking the ice and getting to know each other a little and saying hello, saying this is my name, what do you do? And five minutes before they enter into the uh, room to start having dinner, we tell them what, and what they're going to have to do through our briefing that we give our clients. As uh, it was in uh, school, and we give them rules of how the restaurant works, how you have to act and behave throughout the game, and the clients are happy to receive the indications and directions for the evening, and they're always working and helpful, and we don't allow mobile phones, and it's very important for us that the people tell us uh, that don't show what we do in the restaurant, like on Facebook and Instagram, you cannot enter with uh, you can't have information from outside nor from inside outside. No extraction of information. It's something that has made us understand and learn that when they don't have their tablets and uh, smartphones, they become more people and they become normal people. They start speaking, they eat, they have fun. 
And nobody in a year and a half has uh, complained because we've taken their phones away for two hours and a half, three hours. Other graphics that we use uh, of how the plates and the videos we present on how the dishes work and what has to be done. And this is what they see when it's finished. They do 30 minutes of welcome, one hour and 15 minutes uh, half menu. They exit 10 minutes to go to the bathroom or smoke, then they come back in. They have an hour, hour for the last dishes, and then they go back to the welcome room to watch and have the graduation, let's say, of their dinner. The graduation for us is alcohol, and we give them liquors and spirits to drink so that they can say bye-bye and speak about the experience they lived uh, and what it was like. Uh, and then we show them a present. And this is our present, which is what they did that evening. It's a video that lasts 30 minutes because it goes at a speed five times the real speed and then at the end, people don't see themselves eating. And it's very funny to see the people that sees that they drink a lot, that they get the dirty, the, plate, the table dirty, and they clean up after themselves. And this is one of the most significant thing, things of the project. See how the people react by seeing themselves in the video as they eat and drink. That was the meat dish that, as you can see, they cooked with fire. This is the dessert that they have to put in their own plates and present. And this becomes a competition. It's very fun. And that's what the table looks like at the end, so that when they've seen all the video, they leave. Well. That was the last restaurant that we did together, Martin, and it's a restaurant and uh, has developed and become a mutant because when we called Martin, we wanted to serve boxes that they had already, he had already designed because we wanted to tell a story that arrived and spoke about movement wanted to create a moving, fluctuating restaurant with an aesthetics of movement. How better to do that if not with the boxes that Martin had designed? We also did something very simple and the first thing we did was a logo that was mutating and mutates. It changes all the time. It seems ridiculous, but I like it very much. These were the first drawings Martin had done, and then you can see how it then changes. It doesn't look like boxes anymore, what it was. And these are the renderings. You can understand a little how the boxes would have worked and where the clients would have been. The clients are in front and behind the counters. It's a way of allowing the clients to be free. The clients didn't know whether they had to enter from the left because they saw waiters on the left and on the right. They didn't know if they had to enter on the right because... And so we decided and understood 
that the clients themselves have to share the space. And a counter very often is a barrier, a physical barrier between two people, you that have to feed and somebody who has to receive the food. And so this is, we wanted the sense of freedom to be given here and the whole restaurant could change at any moment and given time. And this was the first mutant brasserie in which we did Brazilian street food. We served the food in paper goblets and dishes that people could throw out at the end of their dinner. The food was bought in a machine. This is the morning before the restaurant opened. The boxes were all closed in the evening. The boxes were all closed up. The restaurant was cleaned. And this is how the restaurant had to see them the morning when they arrived. Nobody understood that when they walked past the window, they thought it was a warehouse of transport and delivery. And there was no word that mentioned it was a restaurant like restaurant. It was the way to play and see if the client would understand us. And this is how it worked in the evening. So you can see this machine right here. We only used it for four or five months. You had the menu in there and the client had to pay beforehand, order the menu, and then go get it uh, when a number told them it was ready. It was a very practical solution because the money only went through the machine and for the clients. At the beginning, it was uh, quite strong of an impact, but then slowly, slowly, uh, people got used to it and it worked well and depending on the concept, we had it served or not. People saw how people made coffee. Uh, it changes if you are behind the counter. The kitchen was open entirely. The bathroom and the kitchen were the only two boxes that you couldn't move or close. This was the food that we did at the beginning, Brazilian tapioca for breakfast uh, of street food. This is paste, which is uh, a very famous sandwich made in Sao Paulo from Italian immigrants who moved to Brazil, who have made one of the best sandwiches in the world. This was the graphics we used. We wanted this restaurant to become like a travel agency, and so we used this graphics and we chose such graphics very similar to uh, what ad travel agencies uh, use to tell and talk to tell stories about the different places in the world. And then the menus are very similar to fast food menus. And this was done after the Muta Brasil. We did Muta Equilibrio. We went from going to Brazilian heavy fried food, grilled food, we created a concept of equilibrium, a macrobiotic cuisine, always with the same space. We then changed again and it was Muta Norte, all of the north of Spain products from the north of Spain, Galicia, and the quality of the product from the north of Spain and we created this Tasca which is the only reference that allows you to understand that you are in the Tasca or the tablecloths, the paper tablecloths uh, that are very characteristic of the restaurants in north of Spain. The graphics we chose were for the products and tells you where the artichoke Navarro comes from and where the uh, Galician octopus comes from and food that was presented in front of the client. The meat, very simple, as is eaten in the northern parts of Spain. And this was what the graphics we used to tell the story. This was uh, one of the last ones. Uh, it was the Muta Balear. It was uh, the gastronomy of my islands, Mallorca, Ibiza, the Formentera. And it became already a bit more of a decorated place. We needed uh, to cuddle our clients a little more with uh, pieces, textiles, fabrics, and uh, 
there was this counter, which was a traditional counter, but everything is made with recycled materials that were temporary. We knew this part could have lasted six, seven months. Very traditional food, even though we created uh, the hamburger, well, we did fish, vegetables. And this was the graphics for the products. This is the last mutation that unfortunately doesn't uh, show what Marty has done, but it's always within the concept. We haven't said to people that the boxes have to stay there forever. We wanted this change. Uh, the boxes allowed us to do two, three restaurants. And now we've seen that uh, for the area where we are and the type of clients that we have, we had to do something that was more decorated and con with more concept uh, and not only food, well, good food. Uh, we had to give them a story that was more complex and complete. This is a restaurant that is a barbecue, uh, like a grill club with smoke. Uh, you cook with low temperatures and you create meat-based dishes. Uh, we have used fish and meat and vegetables, and this is what the restaurant looks like today. It looks like a small street club and not a garage, more of a garage, uh, very cold as it was before. This is the food we prepare. Always very simple, two, three products, and each dish, not more. Next tray, roasted pineapple. And there's no graphics for this restaurant. This is interesting for us because we decided for this concept, we're not going to use our illustrator, we're not going to use our designer, because we wanted to show that this uh, restaurant here, this shop, didn't need the graphics. So everything that was done and is done to communicate, to sell, is done indoors. In the home with stencils, uh, not nice. My designer was so pissed upon Mallorca because it was disgusting. But for me, it meant that I didn't need to design. I didn't need uh, more. This was a joke. I don't know that uh, in Italian we don't say so we sell smoke. It's a way to, to say that people make fun of you and they're selling something that doesn't exist. It was an intentional declaration to tell people that we really smell, sell smoke because it was really the most important ingredient of all these products of high quality. These were the graphics and how we use them on the t-shirts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Marty, I have a chef here that wants to become a designer. You're going to have to become a chef now. I see that as being very difficult. When are we going to open something up in Milan? Whenever you want. In Italy, what happens is that going from opening up entrepreneurship businesses of restaurants that open and close is very negative. There are more restaurants that close than those that open because uh, very few people, according to me, know and have the intuition that you have to have and give a soul to your club. You have to allow the customers to live on experience. And this is what they are doing. Martin, as a designer, as a consultant for restaurants, owners, and Cavier as entrepreneur himself in the restaurant business. So this is the demonstration that when there's a strong concept and you build an experience and construct an experience, then the club has success. Any questions? We also have a very important operator in Milan, which is Giuseppe Zen, which is 
the uh, famous success case study in Milan, because in the past he had indicated how food, street food and popular food could uh, be interesting. How many years ago had you initiated? What would you like to ask our two guests to this evening? Uh, hello and uh, compliments. Hello, everybody. It's amazing to see how design and, uh, and the help of all of you guys can not only interact and permeate entirely and become a whole with food when food is food. When food stays with, with its own identity and it's not uh, dressed up, it's not plastic dressed up as food. When we change the reality and the food in itself, there is nothing that will support it. The container will be beautiful, but if what with, is within it is a false, everybody would realize immediately, and then we will be, you'll feel sick, and we'll be eating things that harm us. Now they have illustrated stories and case histories that show how extraordinary the concepts that give an identity to the design and food, how they can be put together, and how good can become and has to become beautiful. So there's a, an old saying that says that beauty will save the world, help us all. If uh, we can put together beautiful and good, then I think we've saved the world. Thank you and compliments. Questions? A friend of ours and food designer who's already a food designer. Thank you for the introduction. Hello. I'm, it's a pleasure. I've uh, followed you since uh, forever, since I began my career. Projecting an experience is one of the most, uh, the hardest things to do, according to me, in this uh, world, in our jobs, uh, designing restaurant experiences. How can you foresee how people will react to what you design? Do you test it? Do you trial test beforehand? How do you decide the experience? It, uh, you have to observe and you have to observe the people and usually now that we have this presence in the media as uh, restaurant owners and cooks. At the end, they give a presentation of themselves. And the cuisine seems to follow them as fashion and design. You go to a restaurant for dinner, and the new catalog of the dishes of this uh, restaurant owner uh, is super avant-garde and so forth. We are totally different. And our choices are the people. The people are the ones who work with you, that help you and help you understand what it is that you have to tell them about. And very often we get uh, enlightened and we have epiphanies uh, of things that are not ideal and that have to be changed. And then I manage to maybe do these ideas anyways. But, but if we stay with our ego and uh, we act uh, boastful, and it's us, and we have to present some, if you like it good, otherwise tough, too bad, uh, because you're coming to my place. Well, we learn that you can't do this. It mustn't work that way, and the experience has to be dictated and uh, caught and shared by the people, and we learn every day from our clients. Our clients nowadays uh, go to restaurants for a reason, and that is a food experience that they want and taste experience they're a lot more critical and they have the uh, they criticize anything they receive and it's a bigger responsibility for us and it's important to listen and look at them and change immediately if things didn't go or work out the way they were supposed to when I speak to the people working for me if you even have one of the best products in the world and you have to change it every six months if Macintosh does it why don't we have to do it every time we understand that the client has something to say we change and we put it into the system we can do this if we are organized to do that and if we are 
a team. If you are a single player that has great ideas and a strong ego, then chances are it's not viable. You cannot do it. You don't have the time. A restaurant is definitely your life, as you can see from his uh, tattoo. So it's really a total, complete experience. If you had to open a business or a restaurant that had to do with Italian food, what would you work on? We would work on SPD's building. You need something here that is, uh, will help you. A cafeteria. We are learning to be able to create or prepare this idea of Salad de Spiesse and Academia around. We would like to create this and open this uh, in Italy and Milan definitely is a place that could probably easily understand and pick up the message we want to send out to everybody. We're very talented. You can definitely put together this culture, Spanish culture. We found a lot of their formats that are very interesting in Spain, and even formats that were presented here that I, uh, that you call business model and I call format. It's something that goes beyond uh, compared to the interior design of the venue it's, itself, but it's really the concept behind a business. The fact that you were able to put together these two things and the fact that you lived in Italy and are Spanish, I really think that you can put together and come up with a unique uh, thing that is a great experience. I would like to give uh, the microphone to our food specialist. Uh, what do you think about the food and the ingredients that are able to influence the place you go to and create an experience? I would like to reproduce the oven formats uh, that you spoke about because I have a sun oven myself in my lab but I think that on the last floor of a building, if you had solar ovens, so next year we'll do a show practice of how to cook with a solar oven. Any questions? Each concept, definitely, uh, each restaurant is born out of a single idea, of an epiphany, something, an intuition. And then there are other projects uh, that need to be, uh, that are born and have to be born from architecture and the venue itself. And the neighborhood, the street. And then there are other projects that are ideas that need to be developed a lot more when you you get this uh, idea when you're confronting yourself with a product rather than with the food itself sometimes we create projects and work on projects that have to do with something that is very specific uh, like uh, a skewer I'm working on a project now that is focused on skewers and after all the takes place after that uh, also has to do with the identity, the gastronomical identity of what you want to talk about, the story you want to tell. And very often when we had 
this company, catering company. We used to, we didn't really do catering in itself, but we did gastronomical identities for people or for brands. Uh, to give you an example, if I had to set up a catering service or a marriage for a marriage, for a banquet, for two people, the menu was created by themselves. I helped them to create that menu. And then I helped them to create the atmosphere. And then I helped them to create that, that to make sure that that day was unforgettable. But it was always uh, wrapped and enveloped. The ideas were always wrapped and enveloped with people, design, and the help of your workers and your supporters and uh, team members because alone it, it's impossible we have a lot of projects that are drawn and ready to come out but they are waiting for the venue to crop up and the person the right product i don't know if that was uh, clear enough other questions Our architects, no, nobody? First of all, uh, my compliments, uh, really, congratulations, because I didn't know what you did before, and it's really fascinating, and I've, uh, I'm hungry now, I'm really hungry. And uh, at really beautiful but I must say another thing that if all of the entrepreneurs the chef entrepreneurs were like you well, we would probably have less designers the fact that you always speak about a team but I must say that the idea is really fascinating because it's not so specialized or maybe I'm mistaken it's not really a question I'd be curious to understand whether or if when you think about a new form, format or concept or business idea or business plan, you think about the situation first because either the product food, because it seems like in your projects there's a lot of atmosphere. It's always an experience. And so moments in which the people share and live an experience, and it's not only consuming good food, which is good food, and you can see it's good food, but there's much more than that. So what takes over, the atmosphere or the product that you serve? It starts where, it depends where the starting uh, place is, because if we start from the product, and if it's the product, you have to recreate an atmosphere around the product. And the possible, uh, atmosphere for the product to become a best and a better product you always have to uh, raise uh, the level and never lower them or make them worse I'm really uh, demanding for myself and uh, especially because of the responsibility I have when somebody comes to my house I do the same when I have guests at my house I always try to make them go wow with simplicity without uh, doing uh, spending uh, who knows how much money to do that but uh, it's a relationship of love that you have with food and wanting to love people and taking care of them and the great help uh, is definitely the client and so he's it's the last thing you think about when you do a business plan. You put little figures, and the figures tell you how much money you're going to make, but you never speak about the people that are going to be helping you to get those figures to work. And you, don't, you never know that. You can understand it if you open up a restaurant in Monte Napoleone or in the Navigli area. You have different clients coming to there. But when you start, your idea and you launch it, you start working with uh, technicians and I'm always there. What's important for me is to be there in all phases of the project, both from food, in the design, in the architecture, even if we work with people that can teach us a lot, we still have to nonetheless insist and be present and make sure that a house, a restaurant is my personality or my idea. And that is something that really has to stand out and that's what has 
has to be respected by them and they have to bring us to the next level but we must never show them that these restaurants it is only design because if it's only design there's no person there's no soul there's no real story to it and so when you have the idea and you're able through the help of professionals high-level professionals and with your team to create and make a venue into a real place that people really understand and that's really when you can develop and go on and go beyond because the first clients that enter and say if you're doing well or doing bad and what you should change and what not and that's what we do when we first start projects the first two three four months and we change things the restaurant I showed you before in Mallorca I never changed my mind I never changed anything about it until I closed it down knowing that it was the good idea and I was convinced I didn't change anything that's the way I had set it up and that's the way I wanted it to be now Everything I do is three, four, five months, and those are the months of observation where I collect information, I observe my clients, I ask them for feedback, if they tell me if I'm crazy, if I should go ahead, if I should change direction, and very often you have to take a few steps back, breathe in, and recognize that you're a bit crazy or misunderstood, and so you, because you still have to pay wages and suppliers, and it's the first thing that you have to do when you open a restaurant and a business, it's pay business, wages, and suppliers salaries for the people who work with you and the suppliers and so that's what you do sometimes you have a huge success sometimes it's a normal success and sometimes it's a failure and that's where you learn how to do and from each level to pick up and make the best of the experience and very often it's the failures that teach us most When we design a restaurant or think of a restaurant, they have to live us out and they have to live longer than us because if I want to open up many restaurants, I mustn't be obliged to be within that restaurant and stay in the restaurant. It's a way to understand myself that I cannot be very uh, demanding on my ideas. I have to be a bit more balanced and I learned this through time. Because before, when I used to open a restaurant, I was there three, four months, day and night, all the time, doing 16 hours a day. And when I saw that everything worked well and it was launched and understood that the staff understood and the team knew what had, they had to do, we, I start exiting and I let them be. And I start leaving, not because we forget or I don't want to be there, but because the vision changes, the same vision I had at the beginning, after four or five months, it changes because I start working on a restaurant that has a different shape with controls, with the uh, periodical visits. Uh, I never look at anybody, then I have to tell people I'm going. All these things uh, are useful to be able to understand how, how my workers behave and my clients behave. I don't have a known face. I'm not Carlo Cracco. I'm, my restaurants and my clients don't know me, they don't recognize me, and I can listen to them, I can sit next to them, and I listen to them as they're eating and uh, what they have to say about. And this is the things I do to help and bring up my restaurants and make them stay open as long as possible. I hope that my son, who's 10 months old, will be able to work in them for a few years when he gets older, maybe not.
You have an approach, Martin, that doesn't start from food or ingredients. So if you have in mind the idea of the cover of the master in food design or the one that you created on food design, it's all mock-ups. They're not images with real ingredients. What is your approach? Obviously, I'm not a chef. And even the food models I showed you were all made uh, with cross media, which means that uh, the food it wasn't a turnover. It was to have mediatic attention in specific contexts or in a more experimental context. And within galleries and artistic institutions, the approach I have is more a theory of design and uh, food as an object and food is thought and put into a context and consumed as an object and so this object is designed like a good design project. What do you think about the future of the restaurant business? Are we always going to move towards hybrid venues, restaurants that are also food markets, like Italy or vice versa? Places where the restaurant is going to be a characterizing feature, like Yankee Bicycles that creates a bar that speaks about bicycles through food, or is it going to be other? I would really like it to be, even if it's not good for business, that the people, when they enter the restaurant, learn. Learns and brings in knowledge themselves. And in the end, it can be and can have a healthy and a proper own food. Uh, a lot of the young people don't cook, at least now you can see that people are starting to cook more at home. So you are for interaction. Now I think that people are going to cook more at home and are going to go a lot less to the restaurant. I think, even if this is going to be worse for me, maybe this will depend by the countries, but so there are countries. In Spain, for example, there's more attention towards the restaurants and the tapas to consume rather than maybe Italy. Things maybe will change. Italy has a very important tradition with the products. We have it also in Spain, similar, but we broke a barrier with these new chefs that changed their th mindset on the cuisine and they don't only worry about the territory but more about the experience and to share this information which is what uh, Ine Adria is doing and usually the French used to close themselves off and they would close the world out and now the Spanish work in open source everything is shared there are no secrets and this is a great step forward because what they have learned working together everybody can now experience and use taking the information from the internet yes but I read an article where they spoke about a overcoming the Adria's cuisine and we have reached a new type of cuisine which is more simple oriented speaking about you and your business as your as a restaurant uh, entrepreneur and very important for your future what do you think about this concept of uh, hybridness you're not only going to eat or and are you going to do other things and activities or not i don't know i really don't know Venues and clubs will always be uh, different, always more different, and you'll eat and do what will have to be done. You're always very modest, and
and you haven't uh, introduced a new venue that that you work to or he wants us to become a sponsor the bar that you are building <sighs> it's called the X designer bar and it's a bar that I've been working on since last November and the bar was empty and we did the construction of the bar with 3D printing uh, printers so all the cups and glasses are in plastic how many glasses have you created with a 3D printer? 35, 35 clients I have to sponsor when you get to 200 clients. It's a unique piece and it's a limited edition. This is extraordinary in my mind. At the beginning, you only found five printers and the bar was being built. And you know where he created it? In front of Fradelli Adria. And they tell me that sometimes Ferre Adria walks by and looks in to see what happens. He passed by yesterday, I was there when he did. Everybody speaks about Ferran, but Alberto Adria is just as much of an entrepreneur and very intelligent. And he doesn't understand, he didn't understand anything. And he said, look, this is the bar of my friend Marti. And he didn't understand anything. He said, how can this man uh, nobody has entered in three months in this place and it doesn't matter because the bar is not ready and he cannot understand. He was very pissed off yesterday. Other questions? South African student, ex-alumni that is specialized in car design. One thing that we have understood in Sala de Spezia is that when you give simple food and you serve simple food, you basically don't have to speak and you don't have to explain anything. You just, uh, an act of simplicity. So we serve the cuisine in a very simple way. When the product works with the environment it's placed in, you understand even more. I think that the volume of the taste of your mouth grows because if you're eating a product in a place that is correct and an environment that matches the food, when the client touches that product and develops it and changes it, and uh, the way he eats it and the shape he uses, uh, that we tell him how to eat it and sometimes a client changes the way to eat it, the volume of uh, his taste buds grows. We haven't done chemical tests or ran weird tests about it, but we see it in the expression that the people have when you give them a tomato and the tomato uh, cries because that tomato 
uh, brought him back to when he was a child and when tomatoes were real tomatoes and they tasted like tomatoes. And so you realize that uh, it was a winner and that something happened and you let them live an experience that, that thanks to simplicity, there's no other words to explain it. And then we need everything else that goes with it. Uh, we need the designers uh, to make sure that that atmosphere in that moment in time favors and helps uh, to reach that uh, ecstatic moment. We can uh, conclude. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. For the food design students, I hope it has been a great stimulus uh, in this design talk for all students. And then I also feel and believe that everything that was covered this evening will have to be done for the management world because as a, an economist and somebody who studied economy, I think that this is fundamental to understand from a point of view of the organizational and management point of view. So I'm convinced that the next frontier of the retail is always more going to be based on how to uh, use marketing, management, communication, and people from the design and technology and food, which is what we're doing with Food Ideas and with our masters. Thank you very much for having been with us this evening, and uh, I hope you'll remember with a lot of affection what you've seen. Thank you.